After developing our R complex code and functions, ideally we would like to optimize our code. And the way we need to do that is to identify which are the potential bottlenecks and how much time each function is taking from the overall total. So R provides a very convenient function for this, which is called the RProf and SummaryProf uh, functions. And we will see how to use them in order to identify uh, which uh, function is taking most of the time. So in this case, I'll be doing a quite a horrible loop from one to uh, a million. And I will be executing a function in every one of these calls. I will be calling this function over here, which is called t, and this will sum a 10 to each element. So if I run this, so let's first see uh, the first line here. Our prof calls the profiler and it will save the results into a temporary file. So we need to put a, a, a file here. So then after that, I have my function. In this case, this will be, uh, as I said before, looping from one to a million and then calling the function a million times. And it will be returning A in each call. S after that, I, I will be calling the function. So this will be the most expensive part of the process. And then I will be stopping the profiler. And the way we stop the profiler is by using the null argument. And finally, I will be summarizing those results over here. So everything is quite uh, straightforward. So the two results or the four results that I get from uh, rprof are essentially these ones. You can see that I get two data frames initially. And there is, they're basically the same thing, uh, except for the fact that the first one is ordered by uh, the self times and the second one is sorted by the total times. I will explain what each one of these are in a second. And after that, I get the sample interval and sampling time. So sampling time is how much time this uh, process took. So this is the total. Sample interval is the amount of time that are used as the sampling interval in order to evaluate how, how what was executing at each given point of time. So R included one extra instruction every 0.02 seconds to evaluate and realize, well, which function is, is working right now? And identified, uh, well, it's function A, it's function, sorry, it's function T or function X, what's going on? So naturally, the more sampling time or the smaller this interval is, the more uh, disruption we are causing to our travel at some point, it's like measuring our own functions is also altering the results because we are introducing more operations at some point. So be, be very careful not to use a, a very, very small sampling interval because you will be adding more noise than, than actually measuring what's going on. So uh, going back into the two data frames that we have, the first one is ordered by self time, which in this case, you can see that the function t is uh, what took most of the time, uh, this took uh, 0.42 seconds. We can see that the function x uh, took 0.34 and the plus symbols or summing um, took 0.02. Self time means the amount of time spent uh, only in, in this function only in each function without considering what other function is calling after that. On the other hand, total time is quite the opposite, is the amount of time that each function took plus all the time that the functions that were called by this function took. So in this case, if I have 0 0.42, uh, t called the plus symbol because we did a, we are summing things here. We get 0 0.42 plus 0 0.02. This gives me 0 0.44. And the same thing applies here. 0 0.44 plus 0 0.34 gives me 0 0.78. And then I have the percentages, 53%, uh, 43%, 3%. 
and obviously the same uh, percentages for the full time of course here I will have a hundred percent now in this case we are obviously using a, a very very simplified example but this kind of approach is very useful for identifying which is the function that is taking uh, most of our time if I was doing for example here a different thing I was adding before this step I was adding for example another loop that says e is equal to 10 and this loops 5 million times and I run this again in this case uh, we can see that ch things change previously the function that was taking the most by self time was t now you can see that it is x by self time so this means that essentially um, x is spending a lot of time here even more time here than here well, or basically here, because we are looking at self times. We're not looking at what uh, the function is calling. Now, the, the sampling time, you can see that it was practically doubled. Yeah, practically doubled. And the conclusions that we can take here are basically that uh, the rprof and our summary prof or summary prof function allow us to identify which uh, function is causing the trouble and how and design a strategy for mitigating that impact and trying to fix that. It is useful to note here that uh, by looking to this I wouldn't be probably fi finding a way to optimize this. Uh, this is 2% of the operation and at the end I can't uh, save time here but maybe there is a way of changing this loop and optimizing what's going on in function t. Maybe there is a way of, of uh, optimizing that and reducing that time. 